Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this ellipse, as well as be able to identify the center, the vertices, um, we'll even uh, and do the foci. All right. So to be able to do that, when I'm looking at this uh, equation, what I have is x squared divided by 16 plus y squared divided by 4. And what I notice when we're dealing with ellipses, the best thing I always like to look at is look at what is the largest denominator that I have. That is always going to be my a. So you can say that a squared is equal to 16, and b squared is equal to 4. Now, that's going to be very, very important. The last thing we need to figure out is what is c squared. So automatically, you know, I first thing I want to do is identify what is my a squared, what is my b squared. And you got to make sure that your equation is equal to 1, which in this case it is. Then a squared for ellipses is always going to be the larger denominator, which in this case was 16. Now, to find c squared, we have a formula that we have to apply. c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. All right, so now I go and plug that. So I have c squared equals 16 minus 4. c squared is going to equal 12. So now I can just write that in there. Um, so now that I've figured out a, b, and c, now it's time for me to understand where my vertex is. Now, remember, your vertex is. Um, going to be, I'm sorry, not the vertex, the center of your ellipse is always going to be the center. Now, what we notice here is the center is in the form of h comma k. And usually what we'll have, instead of like having x squared, we'll have like x minus h squared. Well, as you notice, there is no h. It's just x squared. So therefore, h is 0 and k is 0. So in this case, I can also now say that my center is equal to 0, comma, 0. So now let's go and plot the ellipse based on the information that we have. All right. So first of all, my center is at 0, 0. So I'm going to plot a point 0, 0 and write center. The next thing is um, now we need to identify my vertices and uh, my foci. Now, from the center, the vertices are going to be a distance of a available. So we actually need to find the value of a. Now, more importantly, is from the center, is my vertices going to be going left or right or up or down? And that's very, very important um, for us to understand. Because so what we need to be able to do is determine where is our major axis. And since my a is under the x squared, I can now say that my major axis is horizontal. So to determine your major axis, it's always going to be where which variable your a is under. So if my a was under the x, my major axis is horizontal. If my, the larger number 16 was under the y, then my major axis would be vertical. So since it's under the x, I have a horizontal major axis. So what that's going to tell me is my vertices, my foci, and my vertex are all going to lie on the major axis, therefore, which is horizontal. So therefore, since the, vertice, since the center is already on the x-axis, I know that my foci and my vertices are also, also, are, also, also, are also going to be on my x-axis. So if a squared equals 4, I can now say that a is then equal to 4. So therefore, from the center, I'm going to go 4 units to the right and 4 units to the left, where the absolute distance would be 4. So therefore, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then left 1, 2, 3, 4. So those are my vertices. Now, um, I didn't state what the covertices are, but the covertices would be a distance of b. So b equals 2. So that's going to be the opposite direction, which would b would make my minor axis, which is, vertic which is uh, uh, my minor axis, which is vertical. And I didn't say to go and find them, but that's one thing. Those are what we call our covertices. And then remember, the foci is between the center and the vertices, and that's a distance of, uh, that's going to be a distance of c. So in this case, I'm going to say c is equal to the square root of 12, which is equal to 2 square root of 3. And square root of 12, 2 square root of 3, so that's going to be between 3 and 4 roughly, right? Because this, uh, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. So it's going to be somewhere between 3 and 4. Um, obviously, I don't have the most accurate graph in the world, so I'm just going to estimate between 3 and 4, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 3, and 4. So I'm just going to put it right there, and then to the left. 
and these are going to be what we call our foci. Now I can go ahead and graph this. Okay. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph your lips, as well as to label the center, your vertices, covertices, and foci. Thanks.